What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Blood on the Razor Wire TV, where we bring it to you real and we bring it to you raw. Got a special guest on, a guy that I actually did some time with at USP Lee. Went to jail when he was a young man, ended up getting involved in some stuff, caught a new case while in prison, been stabbed in prison. He's been through it. But you know what? He can tell his story better than I can. So, Face, tell the people who you are and tell them where you're from. Man, I'm Face. I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, man. And man, just it just man, it's a rough. I had a rough life, man, but I'm home now, man. Thank you, Chad. It's all good. So listen, we're gonna talk a little bit about you going to federal prison. We'll talk about the smooth program, some things you've been through, you catching another case. But let me ask you this: You were 18 years old and sentenced to 12 years, right? Yeah. What were your crimes? What'd you get sentenced to 12 years for? Kidnapping, armed robbery. <laughs> Kidnapping and armed robbery. What was your life like growing up in Philadelphia? Yo, man, I grew up in North Philly Project, 11th and Norris, man. It was just growing up, man. I, I, I can remember some nights going to sleep without eating. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I mean, I've I been seeing all types of stuff, man. I like, man, I've been seeing, man, people die. I've been seeing people. Man, I've seen a lot, man. I've seen a lot in my, little, my life, man, growing up in Philly, man. I want people to know something like sometimes you might bring a guy on the show and you get small details about the person and sometimes yeah. they start freestyling and people are like, oh, that dude's capping. I want people to know I, I want people to know that I you know, I did time with you, I know who you are. Yeah. And yes, you know, man, the man. stories that we're gonna talk about, there ain't no capping. This is shit yeah, that really happened. This shit is real, man. It's real, man. You can go in depth, man. Like it's it's real. She was real solid. What were your parents like growing up? Did they use drugs? What was your life like? Yeah, like my, my mom was a crackhead, man. Like she, she, she's sober now, but my mom was a crackhead. My mom was in and out, men in and out of my life, men, man. You know what I'm saying? Doing just it was just crazy, man. Like, like, like I grew up in the psych hospitals, man. My first time going to the psych hospital, I was five years old. You know what I'm saying? I was fighting in school. They took and sent me to a psych hospital. You know, and I've been at four points before I went to jail. Strap you down, get all types of medication to try to calm you down. Growing up, father did time when I was four years old. He did 23 years, you know, man. And just my, my life been rough, man. And growing up in the streets, man, I've been in, I've been all through the hood, three or four o'clock in the morning, nine years old, 10 years old, dripping and running the streets, man. Something traumatic happened to you when you were 13, right? You got shot? Yeah, I got shot in my ass. Well, we don't want no pictures of that, bro. So you keep the pictures nah. over there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Nah, man. No pictures of that. But yeah, I got shot in my ass when I was 13. I had some stuff. I had some, some, some coke on me. I had some weed on me. And I was running the streets, man. Like, I had a gun to my head. And I was running the streets, man. Like, that's what happened. Like, that's what happened. Like, I was running the streets, man. Like, that's what happened. 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 Like, that's what happened dived over the gate and by the time I dive over the gate already they already be shooting. You know that's sad man when a thirteen year old number one is out selling cocaine at thirteen. It's sad when some other dude that you know might be a little bit older than you wants to Way take older. wants to take something from you and makes a decision to shoot a thirteen year old man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean no 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 documents, no doctor, no police got called, none of that. My grandmother I went to my grandmother's house and she took and she put some uh, peroxide and some other stuff that she used and she pulled it out with a Q-tip. The bullet was still in there and she pulled it out. Well, I mean, with the tweezers and she cleaned it out with a Q-tip and it was good. It was all right. I mean, I that, know I was hit. is that what they're doing in the hood, man? Take you to grandma's <laughs> house instead of the hospital? Yeah, man. It's a little worse. It's a little worse now. Look <clears throat> up Philadelphia, man. Philadelphia. Uh, Philly's definitely a dangerous place, man. I did a, a show on Kabani Savage who... Was probably the most dangerous drug dealer ever in Philly, bro. So let's talk about let's talk about some other stuff, right? You're sentenced to 12 years. You're 18 years old. You're on your way to federal prison. How do you feel inside, man? Man, I ain't gonna lie. I was, I was, I was, I was like, I was nervous. It's okay to be nervous. I was nervous, man. But I was just like, my whole mind frame was like, man, I ain't going for nothing. I'm not gonna play. Nobody gonna play with me. I, I ain't going for nothing, man. I'd rather, I'd rather add another 12 on it than, than then people calling my mom and telling her I'm dead. I hear that. So what's your first prison? Big Sandy. Big Sandy. Big, Big Sandy. And you weren't at the camp. You were at the USP, right? No, I was at the USP. All USP. What's it like for an 18-year-old to walk into USP Big Sandy, brother? Man, 
big big man, big skin man. That was one of the jumping in spots. And if you and if you can't hold your own, that's not a spot for you, man. Yeah, I was there like which what just a uh, couple weeks before I got there. Uh, a guy killed another guy for grabbing his ass. Like it was it was a it was a serious situation. Like it was that that was a, that was a wild. But then they get the, the jail going lockdowns every thirty every thirty days. You know, I got a I did a video about that when the kid kills the kid in a in education over the gay education. shit. I got the pictures of that and dude. Those are, and, and, and those are facts. Those are real, real, real facts, man. Yes, those are facts. So how long are you there before you have an issue over there? Ah oh, shit. I was eighteen. Man. Oh, two weeks. Two weeks you get into it with a dude over what? I was actually no, it wasn't. I didn't get into an altercation, but I got went to the hole. I was drinking, and I had a knife stuck in between, wedged in between the door. We in the cell, and we drinking, and we talking, and playing chess. And I had a knife. So when the police opened the door, the knife is like in full view. Me being dumb, I go to the hole for then in forty five days, and then probably that I got to my first fight. Got yeah, to my first real, 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 real. real. Busting the line, being young though. A lot of my stuff I bought on myself. A so lot you, of my problems I, I, I bought on myself. So I know a little bit about your story, right? You end up getting in a beef with a DC dude over the television, right? Eight times. You you get stabbed eight times. How many times does he get stabbed? Sixteen. He gave me the knife. I stabbed him with. Oh, so oh, so you guys are beefing. You're getting a little argument. It was. It, it, it got. I'm gonna go more, and, and more in depth. Fight. Fight the, the outcome of the fight. Came to the cell. He was like, I'm trying, to, "I'm trying to see you." He had three of his peoples. I had three of my peoples. And he was like, "I'm trying to see you. What you need a knife? We going. We going. We going to use with the knives, man. You know." And, and he gave me a knife. I checked it out. Pretty sharp knife. You know what I'm saying? And we went back in the room. That guy, he stabbed me a few times. I stabbed him. A lot of people look at night fights like, ah, nah. Night fights just like a fight, a, 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 a boxing match. You picking your shots, he picking, and he picking his shots. I'm picking my shot, and he stabbed me eight times. I stabbed him. I was a little more active than him, you know, saying a little older. I mean, he was a little older. I got, I got my youth. But where did he stab you at? He stabbed me in my face, my forehead, the top of my nose. He stabbed me under my left underarm. He stabbed me right here on my forearm. A few of them is standing right here on this forearm. You know what I mean? Good thing he didn't hit you. Time. Good thing he didn't hit you in the eye, bro, when he was stabbing you. Man, you know? he almost. He almost. Oh, I stab my forehead. I got three stitches in my forehead, and they could this this skin ain't thick enough for him to put no stitches in it. But they stab in my nose right here, bust my whole nose. But just this, just the stab wound in the nose, black, both of my eyes swollen shut. Let me ask who you know. Maybe I know the guy. Who was it? Black. Some people call him black. They call him dog. The softball pitcher. Yes. Yes. He was on ass, brother. Yes, he was on ass. Yes. And ass is a, is a booty bandage. He yeah. walks around. He walks around with faggots and all types of stuff like that. Today. Man, wow. Do you end up leaving Big Sandy after you get stabbed? No, I end up. I end up. I didn't not. Oh, uh, to be explained, um, not right. I went to the hole. I stayed in the hole for about I stayed about six months. When like when, when you get ready to get transferred, when they really actually find out that you're going to get transferred, it'll be like six months. You're going to get on the bus and, and go. But yeah, I got yeah. So you go to the hole. Does he does he stay on the yard or does he get transferred too? No, he, no, he he comes back on the yard. He goes back on the yard after I, they transfer me. And and he was a DC dude, right? Yes, that's the majority. That's the majority of the yard. So. It is, it's a no. It's a no brainer. What's your next jail? Lee County. You know what? I made a mistake, Face. Let me ask you this. I wanted to ask you this before we get to Lee County. You getting this beef and you know do you know you guys fight or whatever? You whoop up on him a little bit. He's in his feelings. He's like, man, I'm trying to go knife to knife now. So now he's going to take a chance with his life because he was embarrassed a little bit, right? Yeah, embarrassed a little bit. He's not to work the knife a little bit more in his hands, I guess. So when you go knife to knife, I want people to know that means that, hey, you know, like here, I got a knife, you got a knife, we're going to stab each other. And 
Whatever's gonna, gonna happen is gonna happen, right? We're gonna man it out. Isn't it sad that, that we would do that to each other, man, where we're all in the same situation, we're all in prison, we're all messed up, we're all lonely, our families are sending us money, trying to help us out, and we're we're willing to go in a cell and go knife to knife and take your life or he takes mine. Like, where's the logic in that? You know what I mean? It ain't it ain't it ain't no logic in it. It's just it's just for real. For like I tell you, it's a catch twenty two, man. If you lose, you lose. They put you in these situations, man. And they dangerous, man. Like all this is real. Like all that cap lying. Like I don't got no reason to lie, man. This this, this shit is real. Like I, I mean, I don't want to be hurt. <laughs> and eventually, you go to Lee County, and you know we were at Lee County together at the same time. Yeah. And uh, who'd you tell the people who you ran with? I ran with the blood. I ran with the blood. Gang member, you know what I mean? I ripped and ran all over Lee County, man. And I been in team fight in my time there. Lee County was a little more funner than it was in Big Sandy. Big Sandy was a little more tension. See, I can Lee County wasn't that much. You know, I've told people about Lee County where I'm like, look, Lee County is a place where you can fight. Well, you can get killed yeah. there too. If you want to get killed, you can get killed too. Hell yeah. Yes, you can get killed in Lee County. Who are you fighting you with? It? At, you, you can get killed at anything, in any any penitentiary, any USP. You know what I'm saying? It's a surprise that an FCI can't. But the USP? Man. Tell the people, tell the people who you're fighting with. Are you fighting with your own people over there? Yeah, my own people. My own people. 30 seconds, 31, 31 seconds. Really, it's 31 seconds. 31 seconds, rumble. If, 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 if he call you out, ain't no duck in the wreck. You get your win, and you go right back to fighting. We're over there when... Go ahead. I'm sorry. You get your win, you go right back to fighting. So, so somebody tap out. You know? So we're over there in Lee County, right? And we're over there with a bunch of the same people. I'm in a unit with Jay Boog. Bandana lives across the hall. You remember Bandana? Yeah, I remember Bandana. Definitely a, a troublemaker and... You know, him and Little Wicked from Vegas and all of that. Yeah, Little Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the crazy part is, Wicked wasn't even there that long. The little riot with the blood in D.C., that jumped off his, on the yard. Right on the soon as he started it, he started a gambling table. He started a crap table when he got on the yard. And that's how all that happened. But, yeah, I know Wicked from Vegas. First, he started selling sodas, and then he took that money, started a little dice game, and it really was over a $1 bet. Someone threw the dice over the fence. And next thing you know, next thing you know, it's the D.C. dudes and the Bloods getting it in. New York dudes are helping the Bloods. Some of the New York dudes are out there. They're rocking. And I'm going to keep it real, man. Like, the Bloods did, they did good, bro. They did good. I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I was proud of them. I was proud of them. They went hard, bro. They went hard out there that day on that yard. That was a that was a wild little riot we had over there. And you know, and, and you know how it is in the hole. You hear the deuces going off back to back. You're like, whoa, what the hell is out there going to work? And then when they come back there, you're like, oh, what's up, homie? How you all here? You know what's going on, bro. Yeah, I was there when it happened. What did you end up going to the hole for in Lee County? A bunch of fights. I knocked this one guy out on the tier and dragged him into it and dragged him into another dude's cell. And 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 that ended up getting out of line. That ended up getting out. That ended up getting out of line too because the guy, only thing is that he fucked with Jay Bull. The guy, oh, excuse my language, but the guy that I end up fighting dealt with my shot caller. Basically, the person that has my car. So Jay Bugs had the whip when you were there, right? Yeah. So so when that happened, I went to the hole for that little fight. Out of all the other fights I had it. But I got into that fight, and I went to the hole, and they were starting this smooth program. And they were sending me back to the compound, which I was qualified to go back to the compound after I seen the disciplinary officer. But they were starting this smooth program. They deemed me one of the, one of the top hundreds to go in that program. <laughs> we're going to get there in a minute. I'm not going to cut that out either, bro. You're in here purple, man. People are going to hear This shit is real and it's raw. Hold up. Real shit. <laughs> so anyway... You know, I want to talk a little bit about Jay Boogs because there's some young kids that might be watching this. I believe that I remember his case pretty well. I think he was originally sentenced to 30 years. He wins an appeal, goes back, gets life, comes back to the prison, wins another appeal, goes back, could have copped out, doesn't cop out, goes to trial again and gets life again. And get life, nice stuff. 
And you know what, man? I want to say this. He was he was really a good dude, man. Jay Boogs that's was a good that's, dude. That's, that's, that's my shot caller. Shout out to Jay Boogs, man. Jay John. That, that yeah, that's him. Man. I was in the unit with him. I talked to him every day. You know, pretty good dude, man. And I, I feel bad that, that he went to jail as a young man and ended up with life, man. And, and he's never going to get out. And hopefully, somehow, something changes and he does. But this is the key that a lot of people don't understand, right? You go to prison as a young man. You can have thirty years. You think you win your case, and they're like, "Look, man, go ahead and take this twenty or whatever." You re you reject that and you end up with life. And then the only thing that you have left in prison is you, your claim to fame is I was the shot caller for the Bloods. And I'm not disrespecting the homies or nothing like that. Yeah, yeah, but, that's a fact. but what I'm saying is it's a shame, man, that that's all you're going to be. And a lot of these dudes that we see that are shot callers are leaders, bro. They're leaders. Yes. So you might be the leader of the Bloods, but you could have been the leader of a Fortune 500 company. People don't look at the big picture. If he can control this right here, what, what, what would he control in the streets? Like people don't look at they 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 diplomatic ability. I tilt my hat to a lot of shot calls because I could put as much work in the world, but I'm not I'm not no shot call. I'm not no diplomatic person. I can't talk to people. Like <laughs> so, you end up leaving Lee County, right? And you're leaving Lee County. Yeah. You, yeah. Do you feel sad? Like damn, I'm about to go to the smooth program. Yeah, I was stressing. Two family members. I'm like, man, hell yeah. You end up in the you end up in the in the SMU, right? I want you to kind of tell the people, you know, what the phases are. What is the SMU? Are you locked in all the time? Do you get to come out and watch TV? Tell the people what the SMU program is, and we're going to talk a little bit about the dude that you eventually stabbed that was your selling. Okay, the SMU program is is like it's a it's a twenty it's a twenty four one program, an eighteen to twenty four month program that they set up for the for the BOP. Well, some of the worst, if some of the worst enemies is always getting in trouble and stuff like that. So when you get there, it's basically like they, they basically like you no commissary for the first three months. You can't really like, there's really no, no, like school educational programs come over the radio. You get a shower every three, every other day. You get a shower every day, you get a shower every other day, depending on what side of the tier you want. It's basically like it's basically it's basically it's basically a, a punishment program. They say it's not punitive, but it's, it's punishment. It's punishment. And you know, it was definitely a, a wicked place where you know I've I've heard plenty of stories. I knew dudes that went there and seen them later on. You know, people get people get demolished over there. People were getting destroyed over there, man. Getting paralyzed, killed. I mean, it was a pretty bad situation, right? Yes, yes, yes. I did I did four years there, man. And I did, I did four more years there. I played four years there and caught four four more years there. I got re-prosecuted. Let me ask you this. Did it hurt you mentally and emotionally to be locked in a cell like that? Emotionally, man. I've been, some days now I've been in a single cell, man, and shed tears, just crying, man. Just, you know, it is what it is, man. Do you ever have times, because I've seen dudes do this, right? You ever have times where you're like, man, I'm, I'm going all the way, man. I'm going hard. I don't give, I don't care about consequences, man. What's up? And you go hard with the police, and then later on, they restart you in the program. You ever done that? And then you're like, damn, man, you regret it. Yeah, you regret it. Hell yeah. And then you got to be there with that same police that you you went hard with. It. So now he about to make your time. He about to make your time a little miserable, man. What is it like to be locked in a cell for 23 hours a day, man? What's it like? Man, it, man, it ain't no. Man, you it, it, some people, some 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 guys lose their mind. Man, you even read, work out, do some educational, keep your mind working. Man, I've seen dudes that man, when I first when I when they first got in the smooth, two years later on down the line of being in the smooth, they eating feces and wiping feces all over their face and their body just going crazy. Man, it went crazy in the cell. Man, that stuff, man. Sometimes you 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 think you can hear stuff like I mean, out of this situation, where I'm in the cell so much, man. I feel I heard something, man. I, I don't think I've seen stuff. Like, you start hallucinating, man. That's real life shit, man. You be in the box, excuse my language, but you be in the box so much to the point where, man, you start hallucinating, man. And I know eventually you catch a new case over there. While you're in the smooth program, tell the people yeah. how that happens. Well, off the bus. I was already in the smooth program for about two years. A guy came off the bus. He was talking about another guy that I deal with. Check them about it. I said, listen, bro, we're not going to talk about 
the homie, because that's my homie. You know what I mean? That's my that's my direct homie. And he got up in my face, pointed finger all in my face, told me if, 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 if I wanted to do something about it, I can do something about it. So I tricked him. I already had a knife. So I told him, nah, man, ain't no problem, man. You, you got it. And I stabbed him 22 pounds. You st- I mean, how long after the, the argument, he's pointing your face? A, hour, a couple hours? Is he sleeping? What happens? Nah, it's about, nah, about, about, about 30, 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes. 45 minutes, I just talk to him, you know what I'm let him know it was okay, you know what I'm saying, I ain't gonna lie, but a lot, a lot of men, they like their ego to be stroked, man, you stroke a person's ego, man, they, they, they let their guard down a little bit. Where was this dude from? Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City, so you what, you start stabbing him, I mean, is this cat fighting back? Some guys try to run to the door, scream for the cops, what's this cat doing? I had a few of them, but yeah, he, he, he's fighting back, he bust my nose, Pull my gums up. I mean, person, person, person will fight back, especially when their life's on the line. That's a whole different type of animal. What, fighting for your life. Was he screaming when you're stabbing him? Yeah, he's just grunting a little bit. Grunting. <clears throat> just a little grunting. But he was in there working. Yeah, yeah. And I already know what it feel like. So now, that, I mean, how does it end? I mean, how does this end? He comes to the door. That's the whole cell. They mace the whole cell down until we basically can't. The purpose of the mace is to break you down. Have no more physical strength. Like you can't even hurt each other no more. You in there trying to stop the stuff from coughing, choking you, and you can die in the process just from that mace. You can die in the process from that mace. That shit is strong. So they pull you out. They end up charging you. And I know you got the paperwork. They end up charging you in federal court for stabbing this cat. I mean, this guy, he isn't coming to testify on you or nothing, is he? Nah, dude, you know, because it ain't, it ain't like the streets. When you catch a charge in jail, it's different from the streets. You got, you, yeah, you got, you got people be saying, you got a right to face your accuser. But in jail, you have no more rights. Your accuser is the police. If the police come and say, I saw you do that, you have no more, you don't have no more self rights. So they basically are you. You are your accuser. So basically, you can't win, no matter if he testifies or not. The cops are going to say, I seen Mr. Face stabbing Mr. So and So, and that's it. And they go, and they gonna put him on the stand, and before they instruct him to say whatever he's gonna say, they are gonna make it be stated that he's an expert witness. They put him on the stand and say he's an expert witness. So now you stab this cat. You end up, you end up going to court. How much time do you get? Five months. Forty-five months for stabbing somebody, right? But, you know, they don't give out a whole lot of time unless you usually kill someone, right? Unless you kill them, yeah. Yeah. What about the cops in the SMOOP program? Because they had that Lewisburg program, a bunch of lawyers trying to help guys. I mean, do you think the cops... It was called the the Lewisburg Prison Project. Did you communicate with them? Yeah, I communicated with her. Her name was, shout out to Tony D. Bird. She actually was my public defender on my case. A part of prison project. She got me 45 months, man. Let me ask you this. The cops over there, do you think they went out of their way to kind of set people up? Did they like watching dudes fight and stab each other? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> tell me about it. Tell me, tell me, tell me some of the things you've seen. Like, I mean, I, I, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen the police, I've seen the police. Okay. Say, 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 okay. Say if you already a problem, you already been there like a year and a half. And, in one situation where a guy was already there two, three years. He was one of the smooth trouble inmates. Okay, you get a guy that come off the bus, another guy getting off the bus. When he get off the bus, he get into an argument with one of the police that's in intake. So you know what he's thinking? Oh, it's like a family, but the office is like a family. So they can call to a unit and be like, okay, well, I got an inmate coming. I got an inmate coming off the bus. He thinks he's hot shit. Put him in the cell with old Johnson or put him in the cell with old Anderson. Then they got to win win situation. They already really don't like Anderson, Anderson, but they know he's a cell warrior. What's a cell warrior? A cell, or basically a cell warrior. You got a cell warrior, bad. You got a bad cell warrior, and you got a good cell warrior. Uh, uh, A bad, uh, well, back again. A bad cell warrior 
is a person that argues in the cell and cuts you out through the door, but really don't want no firefighter. All he wants to do is sit on the door and argue with you. Try to and you basically his entertainment for real. Yeah. You know, but and then you got a good cell warrior is the dude that's in the cell and all he's doing is working out and all he's doing is mentally building himself up for a person that he got to defend himself against. Not really a lot of stuff don't really be opposing. A lot of stuff be people trying to defend themselves. So they'll send you into they'll send you into a cell with a dude that's gonna hurt you. Yes, literally. The dude already got a knife. The smooth program is a like I said, a vicious, vicious place. You know, you were a young man when you went in there. I'm sure this stuff hurts you mentally and emotionally, but what's some of the worst things you've seen at the Smooth program? Worst things you've seen happen? Suicide. I don't watch the guy right across the hall from me, a Native American guy, hang himself from the bars. I don't watch the I don't, I don't watch the guy. I don't watch the guy hang himself. I don't watch the guy eat feces. I don't watch the police hog tie guy. For, I'm talking about for, for, for so I'm talking about longer than me, like at least six days. He yelling, he yelling on the range. He asking us to them for him, man. It really don't get nowhere. They'll move you. They'll put you in there with them. They'll put you in restraints right there with them. You know what I'm saying? I've seen police. I've seen like the racial slurs. I've seen police stuff, man. I had the police grab me by my my esophagus and choke me until female tell them to stop. What about? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I got I got scars from from the shackles, chains. I got the cone tattoo. So let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Right? Were you one of the prisoners where they thought or felt like you know you were a mental health patient? You were a bug out? Yeah. 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 Hell yeah. I was I was I was one of the inmates. They call it management issue. You know what I'm saying? If you can't get out of the program 18 to 24 months, you can't get out of the program. You, you got something, something is, is, is a problem that they, they feel. Let's talk about this. Violence wise, inmate on inmate. What's some of the worst inmate on inmate stuff that you've seen? I mean, I've seen a guy choke a guy. I've seen a, uh, the Serenio. I've seen a, well, he's a Mexican mafia choke another Serenio, kill him in the, in the cell with a, with a phone cord. Choke with a phone cord. And they they actually they actually the police actually walked this guy to his death, man. Walked this guy to his death, man. His name was China Boy. He was Serenio. And, and, and he got killed. Man. He got he got killed with a phone cord. Real no cap. This is real shit. He got choked with a phone cord in Lewisburg in 2000, I'd say eleven. Some shit like that. Yeah, but it's real shit. Choke him out. I don't watch the I, I don't watch the police hang a guy from the bars, hang a take him up. like in Lewisburg, you go upstairs like an older prison. So they got a lot of blind spots. And I've seen him take a guy out there after he's been sprayed and hang him from the bars for at least an hour or two. So some people came and and, and they they clean they they clean their tracks. But man, the, the federal prison man, that's 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 hell, man. That is hell. The phase is hell. And you end up in the end, you end up going to where? To Thompson, Illinois. Yes. Yes, I ended up. No, I, were you someone from Lewisburg? Yeah, where do you go from Lewisburg? I, I left Lewisburg and went to Florence, Colorado. No trouble over there. You end up getting out of there. I, I, I finished the program. I finished this new program after four years. I finally finished this program. I got my little certificate or whatever, and they sent me to Colorado. They sent me to Florence, Colorado. I was in Florence, Colorado for for like a year and a half. And I got into it with a counselor. The counselor slammed me on the back of my head. And and you know, when you get when you get into it with the police, it's different from getting into it with the inmate. You get a threat assessment. And when you get a threat assessment, that's basically the police saying that he don't want you around him no more. And then they sent me to Carter, they sent me to Coleman, Florida. In, in, in Florida. So let me ask you this though. I mean, the guy slams you on your head. I mean, are you 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 strike me as the type of dude that's probably fighting back? Hell yeah, I'm fighting back. I got sort of officer, I got sort of police officer. Hell yeah, I'm fighting back. Hey, but he fucked me up. What? A white counselor? His name is Church. Don't let the white man whoop your ass up in. Nah, <laughs> <just> like... <laughs> Shit. 
Shout out to church, man. Yeah, you'd be a dummy to think you can beat every white person. <laughs> I'm just messing with you, brother. I'm in one of the moods where I'm having fun today. I'm one of the real <laughs> It's all good. So you go to Coleman. Are you, I mean, obviously you're not good in Coleman because you end up in Thompson. Stabbing in Coleman. A guy that I end up, a guy that I end up fighting in Big Sandy. We supposed to have separate teams. They brought him all the way to Coleman, Florida, and we end up in the same unit together and see each other again. And it went from a fist fight to a lock on the fist fight. I had a lock, and he had his fist, and I beat him. And you know, too much can can compete with a lock on a belt, but I go back to the smooth. I go right back to the smooth. I leave Coleman, Florida, and go right back to the smooth. I did. By the time I got there, the program was broke down to nineteen, like like I mean nine to four to twelve months, fourteen months to be. But they got broken down, and I went there, and you know I already got the cheat sheet. I was already there four years. I finished it. Two years, I was gone. I did it. It still was still it still was a jump. I ended up staying two years, but. I got out of there, man. I went to McQuarrie, Kentucky, in Pine Knot, Kentucky. I know eventually you make it to Thompson, Illinois, right? Yeah, that's where I came home from. And you know, a lot of, there's a lot of talk about how dangerous and violent that place is. That's, that's, that's the worst spot in the DOP. Over Hazleton, over Big Sandy, over Pollock, there's no spot like Thompson, Illinois. Tell no me. Spot. And that's not the inmates. Yeah, the inmates are dangerous. The police will literally kill you down there, man. For real. They're playing no games. No games down there, man. They will literally kill you down there, man. For real. And guess how they, they, they kill you? Like, this is not this is not no... Where they bring you to the city, even though half the police that work in Lewisburg School is at Thompson, Illinois School. But with they, it is different down there. It's like, it's like the unwritten law. They get out of line. Make them finish the program if they don't give them hell. Stabbings and stuff over there, a couple killings, right? Yeah, yeah. God just got, God just got before I left, God just got killed. Stumped in his throat. Other guys, he was a Jew, and the, and the other guys, they were some white supremacists, some skinheads. And put the one guy in the cage, just four to a cage, you and your son, another guy. But they put, if you, if I say one guy in a single cell, they had to take another single cell and make it. Oh God. They put the other guy in there with the other three guys and they said, um at the end they at the end they said, um that Jew boy just stuff stuffed him with his neck. John killed him. He died from the he died from the wounds in jail. Unbelievable. He died from the wounds in the hospital. Unbelievable. So listen, man, how long you been out? I've been out nine months now, man. You've been out nine months. And I know that you told me, man, you've been struggling, right, out here in the street, right? Yeah, man. I've been struggling bad, man. I've been struggling, but I'm holding on, man. I've been struggling. And I know you told me you've been eating noodles and sardines. Yeah, I ain't so I've had for three months straight, three, four months straight. I ate every night I went to bed, I ate sardines and ooze and ooze. The same shit we buy in jail. I just went to the grocery store and bought it again. What do you want out of life, man? That's my question to you today. What do you want out of life? I want to prosper, man. I know too much. I got too much. I got my GED when I was in jail. I did a lot, even though it seemed like a man, my, my time was wild, man, I got a lot done in solitude. I got a lot done on lockdown, man. You know what I mean? And and, and I say, man, I just I just I just want a chance, man. I want a chance. Like I'm striving, I'm hungry, man. I'm trying to do right, not the wrong thing. Right. It's easy to get in trouble, man. But it's hard as hell to get out. You know, this is what this is what I'm gonna do today, right? And I went to the jail up and I went to jail. At so much of a young age, man, I'm people washing my clothes for me when I went when I went to jail. I never paid rent on nothing, never paid a cell phone bill, never cooked a full meal. And when I got home in nine months, it was like, wow, this shit is really changed, man. And and it's it's, it's kind of it's, it's, it's kind of tough. I'm not gonna lie, it's tough. Man. So now you got to be responsible, right? Are you working a job? That's Yes, I work at McDonald's, but right now I gotta get another. I gotta get another. The same manager that owns the McDonald's I work at owns another McDonald's, and he's transferred me. And the only reason I'm getting transferred for authority reasons, man, being rebellious, man. You gotta do the right thing, or else you're gonna be back in jail, brother. 
No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm, it's not. It's not like that. That is not to the point where I'm just being violent or I'm. Um, no, it's, it's not, nothing like that. It's just like I know what it is. I'm. A, I'm gonna tell you what it is. You don't like people telling you what to do, and you're beefing with the with the boss. You think you're the boss. I just see that just because you're a manager and you're standing next to something that needs to be cleaned, just because you're a manager, you don't have nothing to do. Clean it. Don't just don't tell me to clean it because you're a manager. Come on, dog. Well, I mean, he's he's the boss man. So if he's the boss man. And right now, I, I, I will say right now they got me on the list. The Social Security. They saying I'm unable to, I'm unfit to hold a job. This is what I'm going to do for you, right? People that are tuning in, I want them to know that I know you personally. I know you from prison. I want them to know that the struggle is real. I want them to know that your life wasn't easy. You grew up with parents that were drug addicts. Your father was in prison. He's from D.C. Your mother's from Philly. She was using drugs. And, you know, people get on these shows and they'll make comments and say, don't tell me about being a product of your environment. But it is real. So when your mother's a drug addict and you got no clothes on your back, you got no food to eat because she's done sold the food stamps, life is rough. So yeah. life kind of dictates the route that you're going to take. As yeah. a young man, you took the wrong route. You looked up to the drug dealers in your neighborhood because you were hungry and poor. Yeah. So what I'm going to do for you today, right, and I'm not paying you to do an interview because I don't pay people no, for interviews. No, no, no. So what I'm going to do today, though, I'm going to shoot you $100 on Cash App, and I'm going to post your Cash App. And if anybody thinks that they want to help you out, they can. $5, $10, $25, $50. It could be, it could be anything, man. And... I'm going to continue this up. I'm about to start doing videos, shooting videos, man. You know, and that's and this what I want to do. Shout out to Chad, man. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to school you on some stuff and give you some ideas after we get off. But I'm just going to tell people, man, if you want to look out in his brother's cash app, it's going to be in there. I know him personally. He's deserving of a little bit of help. Things aren't easy. The man's eating noodles and, 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 and Jack Mac. He's eating the same shit he was eating in prison. Right? Hey, at least he's eating. Some people aren't eating. I'm eating. Yeah, that's a fact. But you're working this job at McDonald's, and really your money, and we talked about this, is going towards, you know, your rent and, and your, your electric and, and you're broke. You have nothing. Yes, man. I'm, I'm really, I'm really, it's, it's, it's really, if it wasn't for my woman, man, shout out to my woman, man. If it wasn't for my woman, man, I'd be out here, man, sleeping under a bridge or something. That's so what I'm doing about. is, I'm going to help you, and I'm going to, and I'm going to teach you a couple things that I learned about yeah. YouTube, and maybe you can make a living doing YouTube, right? I want to see you succeed. Yeah. I do not want to see you go back to prison, Face. Personally, I don't want to see you go back to prison. So today, we're going to help you out. The video will be up in a day or two, but that's what we're going to do. So before we go, because you've been through some things that people can't understand. People don't know what it's like to be locked in your bathroom for 23 hours a day. They don't know what it's like for a young man that is immature. I'm just going to call it what it is. A young man that's yeah. immature, you go to prison, and they lock you in a cell, and it destroys you mentally. It's like when a little kid gets grounded to their room, your dad tells you, you're going in the corner for five minutes. These people are putting you in the corner for four years. Yeah. So it's a big difference, and it, it did. It, it hurt you mentally and emotionally, yeah. brother. So before we go, there's, so, there's some young kid watching. And even, and even, and even we're working. Even we're working. It's not even. It's not something that is really like when you when you become when you when you become mentally like 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 when you become mentally things like you can't even be around crowds of people, man. It's just gonna it's gonna throw your energy off, man. It's just, it's just bad, man. Being in captivity, it changes you, man. It changes you, man. Just being in a in a in a, in a, gro a grocery store, everybody looking at you. I understand it. So listen, before we go. There's some young dude in Philly watching this. He's maybe on the same path that you run. He doesn't know what it's like to be locked in a cell for 23 hours a day, 24 hours a day. You know, I don't want to see that young kid go from 13, 14 into a prison cell. So what message would you have? What message would you have for that young man from Philly right now watching Blood on the Razor Wire? Listen, bro, straight, no cap, no lie, man. Listen, man. My nigga, go to school. Go to school. I tell you to go to school and keep striving, man. It ain't gonna happen overnight. All these people that you admire or look up to, they didn't get that overnight, man. The people kept striving and striving and striving. And if I would have knew that, man, I wouldn't be right here. You know what I mean? Just stay in school, man. Get the education because that's what's going. That's what's going to push you through. That's how you're going to be. That's how you're going to be able to prosper in life, man. You 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 got to get you got to get an education, even if even if. Even if, 
They want you to be educated. Nothing in life. Just be educated, man. Just and stay away from the people who in the wrong way. From the people that's gonna lead you in the wrong way, man. Well, listen, that's face. Say, man. I mean, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, man, education. You, you know, go to school, but have a bigger mind. You might be working at McDonald's, but you got to believe bigger and say, you know what? I want to own a McDonald's in five years. Or you might be working for a roofing company and say, you know what? I'm going to learn everything I can learn. And in three years, I'm going to stack my money and I'm going to own a roofing company. You got to think bigger and think outside the box. So listen, brother, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you sharing your stories and experiences. I also think that we'll probably do a part two because I know you were over there, I think, when Whitey Bulger got killed. You were in the unit. Yeah, yeah. I'm you, in the unit. You looked in his cell and, and seen him dead, didn't you? I looked in his cell when he was when he was dead. Literally blood coming out of his mouth, out of his eyeball. Yeah, I was there. Unit F1. You were over there with Freddie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Freddie is the, Freddie the one. <laughs> well, we ain't going to say too much. He's going to trial. But <laughs> listen, um... <laughs> I definitely appreciate you coming on. If people like this message, man, it ain't about me. Share the message. I think it's a pretty good one. Blood on the Razor Wire TV until tomorrow. With respect, we're out.